Hello, fellow Araxians. Commander Sirius here. Welcome to The Principles of Gunplay. Ignore a game title for a minute. Has this ever been you in a first-person shooter? Or let's even take it a step further. Not just asking, but genuinely frustrated. You love the concept of the game, but it's completely unfun because you can't find fair fights. And maybe you've even tried asking for help, either in-game or on a subreddit. And a lot of times you're met with responses that in so many words say this, or this, or this guy even made a Reddit account just to say this. Now, even though it's short and sweet, this is good, accurate advice, but is it helpful? It makes it sound like it's a one-step process. You have this problem, boom, move to here, solved. Get good, aim better, hit the head, hit 80 80 a lot no problems you're just as good as anyone else the reality is is the gap between these two stages is massive it's something more akin to this now you can close this gap but there are a lot of steps between it and that is what this series on the principles of gunplay is going to do for you it's going to teach you about basic mechanical things that you can do that are going to set you on the right path visibility, sensitivity, video settings, and then we'll move into the non-mechanical things, maneuvering, recoil control, situational awareness. I'm pretty sure maneuvering your character and recoil control are both uh, mechanics. They're both me mechanical things. Visibility is not so much mechanical, unless... You're talking about the actual ability of the, the person to see and perceive targets and threats. But a lot of visibility comes from settings. So I, I don't I actually don't like this whole kind of screen because some of this stuff like visibility and settings kind of go hand in hand. Uh, but se sensitivity, maneuvering and recoil control. Those are all mechanical things that that. Okay. I, I don't know what, what I expected. Aiming. He said aiming was non-mechanical? This series is the bridge for that gap that links the new player frustrations to the good <laughs> advice, but may not have tools or descriptors <sighs> on how to get there. Oh, no. Now, we'll be moving through this series focused around PlanetSide 2, but many of these principles are not game-specific. Reducing your input latency or keeping your frames high will help you in any number of first-person shooter titles. This series is about building a good base of knowledge of how to approach first-person shooter games. And I'm sure, I'm sure you're the person to do it. I'm so glad that we have such a great FPS player to come in and show all these people how to do it. I can't wait till he goes over his credentials. I can't wait to see that part. In general. If you have any issues translating some of these concepts to other titles, please leave that down in the comments and I can get to videos that are more specific regarding video settings or other topics on the title you're interested in. So welcome soldiers, class is now in session. A quick reminder, these videos aren't sponsored by a company selling a product, instead they're sponsored by generous viewers like you. People that like my videos and want to support my ability to make more in the future were kind enough to hit the join button on YouTube and became a member of the Sirius Army. Thank you, soldiers, for your continued support. And if you want to help the Sirius Army rise, please consider enlisting today by hitting that join button. So, our lesson for today is sensitivity. As we travel towards becoming a better shooter, we need to eliminate things that are going to impede our ability to track targets. And having good mouse sensitivity settings is a basic tenet of that. And our first goal is making sure you have a one-to-one -one input ratio. That means for every inch you move your mouse physically, there is a specific change in your reticle on screen. If you move faster, it moves faster. If you move slower, it moves slower, but the distance stays the same. Now, something that comes up when I promote one-to-one -one movement on your mouse 
is hey serious i play this crazy arena shooter or i play ambusher la with hip fire carbines and a punisher if you want to go out there and do these crazy spins with one centimeter 360s great but that is different gameplay than you're seeing here it's different gameplay than your average PUBG apex legends match it is generally very contra to building good tracking muscle memory yeah, I I generally have to agree with that, and there's kind of a, a big misconception. Like you see it a lot with, you see a lot from newer, inexperienced players that come to FPS games that are asking, you know, they're asking about the sensitivity stuff, and a lot of them have this idea that you have to have, you have to have a fast sensitivity to to do things, to react to threats in the game. But a lot of them don't realize that, like, they might see gameplay of, like, they might see gameplay of, like, someone like me, and I, I flick between people, like, quickly, but that's, it's a big movement for me. Uh, I'll probably, like, interpose, uh, interpose, I'll probably interweave footage here of, like, my mouse and my, on my sense and stuff, and just show you the, like, the distance, like, you can do pretty much all the same things for the most part on low sensitivity. Uh, okay. First, the first thing we have to do is is figure this shit out. Okay? And the shit I'm talking about is defining this shit correctly because all, a lot of you guys get this shit fucking wrong and it's infuriating and it's very fucking annoying. When some people, let's go over a few things. Okay, so when I say low sensitivity, I'm not talking about the value. Uh, let's say, and by the way, all this is going to be in centimeter 360 because no one really uses inches per 360. Mostly weirdos do that. I was taught and brought up to use centimeters uh, just because it's more of a universal thing. You can use inches if you want, but for the most part... Whenever you hear people talking about the most people who know what the fuck they're talking about use centimeters per 360. Again, there's a conversion and it's it's semantics at the end of the day, but you'll find that most people that say inches per 360 don't know what the fuck they're talking about generally because that's the first thing they go to. I get it. We're American. Uh, we're stupid. We don't use the metric system for the most part. But the guys that understand what we're talking about here in terms of sensitivity with the mice and, and the pads and everything, the people that understand what they're talking about, we talk in the language of centimeters per 360, not inches. 99% of the time. Okay, you might say, what the fuck's the difference? You can just do a conversion, but just just use centimeters per 360. It's, it's a lot easier, okay? Uh, and it's kind of a clue... It's kind of a clue right away that there's a couple things right away that give you a clue that that's that Sirius is not going to be the greatest teacher ever. OK, so the thumbnail for his fucking video is, I think, of a G600, which is a laser mouse, which has built in acceleration. It's basically an, an MMO mouse and you don't use MMO mice to play fps games if you want to be any consistent at all they're not the same thing it's like it's like using uh it's basically using the wrong tool for the job okay it's like using a hammer when you need a screwdriver so that's that's number one number two he's already starting with inches per 360 some of the stuff that he says the stuff uh, what he defining what is mechanical and what isn't okay cool but anyway, to get back to the point I was trying to make, when I say when I say low sensitivity, and when when people are talking about this and say low sensitivity, you're talking about someone who has to make big movements. They use a lot of space. They have to use big movements to make adjustments in the game. That's a low sensitivity. Uh, low sensitivity, as in you have to do more manipulation of the mouse to use it. Not low as in the number value of the centimeter 360, because that would be the opposite of what we mean. So if you were to interpret low sensitivity as something lower uh, numerically than 20 centimeters or 30 centimeters, that's literally the opposite of what we're talking about. And low sensitivity, I guess, 
I guess we have to get into what are normal sensitivity ranges. Now, in, in my experience, <clears throat> for the most part, a normal sensitivity range, the most common sensitivities you're going to see for people that are actually successful at shooters is generally anywhere between 20 and 50 centimeter per 360. That, this is, that's generally the range. So you're going to have a lot of these people that come in and they come in and play on these like really retarded sensitivities. Like I, I, you see these people all the time. I play on, a, 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 I have a five centimeter 360. I have a two centimeter 360. I have a half a centimeter 360. I'm comfortable. Okay, man, you might be comfortable with whatever that is that you're using, but I, I can almost guarantee you that you are worse and less consistent than all the people who are playing in this 20 to 50 range, somewhere in there. Uh, generally, that's pretty much going to be your sweet spot. Uh, if you're playing if you're playing outside of that, uh, I mean, it a lot a lot of this stuff is situational. Like it depends what game you you're playing. It depends what what the game and what the gameplay and the gunplay values. Uh, it, it's different, you know, if you're playing a tack shooter or a more of a battlefield style game with open environments where like, if you take, for example, a, a tack shooter like CSGO or Siege, there's only so many angles that you have to be, uh, accounted for. You have to account for. So crosshair placement, super important. I think crosshair placement is important in, in all of these games for sure, but uh, in games with a super, super low time to kill, like CSGO's one-shot headshot kill, uh, Rainbow Six Siege, one-shot headshot kill, Valorant, I think is a one-shot headshot kill. I don't I don't play Valorant, so... Uh, so there's a real premium on, on uh, crosshair placement. That's not to say that there's not a premium on crosshair placement in Planet Side, because it, it's just as important. It's just as important to start out and get that good alpha damage on people. Uh, but you can't really do that if you're looking at the fucking floor. Uh, so, yeah, so low sensitivity is slow. Low, slow, low, slow, okay? Uh, when uh, And obviously the opposite of that, when people are talking high sense, we're not talking about the number of centimeter per 360 being higher. We're talking about uh, it's faster, so uh, when people say high sense, they mean they should mean the correct meaning is faster. Uh, so yeah. So to get started here, we're going to go to your Windows mouse settings first. I'm on Windows 10 here. Yours might look a little bit different. Okay, so the first one of the first things that you need to do here in the Windows mouse sensor in the cursor speed <laughs> is to set it to the sixth tick. So it should be right in the middle, but it should be one, two, three, four, five, six. Now, oftentimes you'll see you'll see things uh, like if you look up settings for that people are using or whatever, it'll show you their Windows setting, and it'll be a, a digit out of eleven. So there are eleven ticks on this line, and you want to be generally. I there's really no real reason to be outside of this, but you want to be on the six ticked out of eleven. So you'll often see six out of eleven is what you want here. Let's see what he says. But you're going into settings, you're looking for your devices, yeah, here it is. Here it is. and you're looking for mouse. The modern interface probably Not gives you a 0 speed. through 20. You should be at... Here. So you see here, there's... Is my cursor here? You see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So this is the thing where it's saying, oh, you want to be 6 out of 11. Yeah. 6 out of 11, right here in the middle. And uncheck enhanced pointer precision. Let's, let's see what he does. Get 10 right in the middle. If you click additional mouse options, you're going to see the underlying screen that is an older version of it. And traditionally, the one-to-one -one ratio setting was always six slots in right in the middle between slow and fast on pointer speed. Now that I've shown you all this, I'm going to tell you why it doesn't matter. Next, I want you to go in-game under general settings. Go to use raw mouse input. This will bypass any acceleration that the Windows software sets and just use what comes from the mouse. You should be able to find this setting on basically any game, but I'm paranoid. So I like to go in and set it in Windows as a one-to-one -one ratio and then... 
it's it's rather funny to me that you're paranoid about and yeah you should use raw mouse input you you should use raw mouse input but it's it's curious to me that you're paranoid about acceleration but you buy a fucking g600 laser mouse to play fps games with Make sure it's set in the games as well. Now you're getting a glimpse at my sensitivity settings here. I often get asked for my user options file or my sensitivity settings. And this footage without any other context is basically worthless. Yes. Just knowing these values right here, knowing these values is absolutely fucking worthless. Because just knowing the, the, the sensitivity in-game I, it doesn't tell me anything. I have to know what DPI this man is playing on to be able to figure out what's going on. Now, what I mean by that is uh, we can go here and do this, right? Okay, so this is mousesensitivity.com. This is an awesome site. So we're going to go to Planet Side 2. And just to demonstrate this here, we're going to go hip fire. What is his 0 0.030? I also don't know. I don't know what resolution or anything he's playing on or what FOV he's playing on. Uh, I'll just put 74. Uh, so am I on advanced? <clears throat> okay, so we have a problem here. I, why, I have the value. I'm playing Planet Side 2. Uh, I'm trying to understand the what what distance measurement this guy is using uh, for his hip fire, uh, but there's something wrong here. I I typed in his sensitivity. Oh fuck! I don't know his DPI. So without a DPI, you see a lot of these people on on Twitch uh, or even in YouTube comments that come in and say, "What's your sense? What's your sense?" It's like. I, I understand what you're trying to ask me, but at the same time, you're an idiot. And people people that come into your channel and stuff asking for your sense, expect I guess they expect to just type in the sense and, and aim the same way you do, because they think they think I guess maybe that if they play on the same sense as you, that they're somehow the same player as you or something. That's wrong and stupid. Uh you make fun of these people that don't ask for or or you have the people that just ask what dpi you're playing on the, those people are funny too because one without the other is completely useless and dpi doesn't really mean shit you can play the same measurement movements in your arm and your hand on 400 dpi as you can on 1600 or 3200 it's just a matter of the scaling in game on that sensitivity and I, I guess there's an argument to be made that there's uh, there's some latency or input latency differences between the different DPIs, but uh, any anything there is pretty much imperceptible. But uh, yeah, let's 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 actually see what he plays on here. I'm a strong believer in that you can use someone else's as a jumping off point, but you really need to come to your own sensitivity settings. And this is this is something that's dangerous too, and this is something that you shouldn't necessarily start people who don't have a knowledge base with, because what the problem the problem you have here, what what this breeds is these people that go that eventually end up with they play on absolutely horrible inconsistent dog shit sensitivities. They're bad. They have bad accuracy. They have bad headshot rates. They're not very effective in what they're doing. And these are the people that have come into the game and the, the people like Sirius have said, you know, find what works for you. So then they play around with it. They don't have any outside. They don't talk to any good players. They don't know any good players. They don't watch any good players. And they just get comfortable in a sensitivity. And then they just stay using that. Or worse off, they change their sensitivity all the time. So you never have any sort of consistency. And when they do seem to, to land on a sensitivity they are comfortable with, it's, it's shitty.
and it doesn't actually allow them to be consistent. And they'll argue with you until they're blue in the face about it, but the metrics are objective. You might be comfortable with your sensitivity, but if you're comfortable with your sensitivity and you're shooting a comfortable 20% accuracy, there's something... Something's holding you back there. Uh, now, it could be a, a myriad of uh, other factors, but generally the people that I see in my experience over time playing these games and interacting with these people is almost everyone that says that they... You get in these arguments with people. All these people that say, I'm comfortable with my sensitivity are always, in general, pretty bad. And they don't shoot very well. And they're very inconsistent. They have, like, very basic fundamental problems with aiming and tracking and, and shooting people. So it's kind of a dangerous thing to go ahead and tell someone who's just like these people that come to the game. And would you just look at it? I'm back on the fucking thing again saying this game doesn't attract FPS players. And man, every year, every year that goes by, it's just I just I just love being right. So you have all these people that that don't play FPS games that come to game uh, to a game like this where FPS skills do translate. Uh, and they get advice from people like this that say use what's comfortable. Uh this this is ultimately I've talked about this before in videos I've done about Sirius, but this is the ground floor problem with creators like this is you have people that are new to the game that come to the game and they get information on what to do in the game for the first few hours. They get the very the very, very basics of what to do. And they form some level of, okay, this is working for me. They form some level of trust with the creator. And they're like, well, if he was right for that, I can go to him with something else. That would be great. That would be great if if it was real. But in in this case especially, we fall into a trap where we're looking at taking advice on how to get better from people who are not better. You're taking advice from casual... Like, you're taking sensitivity and aiming advice from someone who's playing an FPS game on an MMO laser mouse. If you don't understand why that's a problem, you need to do your research. Uh, if you're not immediately struck by that, uh, right, right here and right here, then you have learning to do. It's it's stunning. When I saw I saw this in my Discord, someone linked this in my Discord. <laughs> I was like, what it was what is that mouse on the on the thumbnail? And he puts it on the thumbnail. Like I you know, I'm so I'm so grateful for for all these content creators that we have that you just have a never-ending supply of, of content to put out based on this stuff. <sighs> But anyway, uh, yeah, I I'll get back to it. And the first thing you need to take into consideration is the user's DPI on their mouse. So yes, that is my sensitivity settings, but I run 1200 DPI. If you're running 5000 DPI, those settings will behave completely. Okay. Uh, you should you should probably be using. 400, 800, 12, well, 4, 8, 12, uh, no, not 12, 4, 8, 1600, or 3200. There's really very little fucking reason for you to use anything outside of one of those four things. Honestly. I'm not sure why, like, I can't imagine, like, looking at, looking at this, like, So his, so if you're not familiar with Logitech gaming software or, or uh, LG Hub or whatever, I use LG Hub because XD super light. Um, this is bizarre. Like this man is playing on his lowest, his lowest setting here 
is 1200. Okay. And then he has he has a switch. It'll have a switch. You'll use either like this G8 button or this G7 button uh, and switch up to the next deep buy. So, so 7650. Could there be any like this is the most like arbitrary fucking numbers I've ever seen in my life. What what the hell is this? And why are you playing on 500 polling rate? Just play on 1000. Why are you What what the hell is this mouse? You can play on 125, 142, 106. What is this? Uh, for for morbid out of morbid curiosity, I, I'm gonna go look at what he's playing on. He's playing. This man's playing on 1200 DPI. Okay, let's see what his actual sensitivity is. A 37 centimeter 360. That's that's perfectly normal. 37 centimeter 360 for hip fire. Great. Perfectly fine. Uh, so what is his ADS? His his aimed is the same value. I'm pretty sure his aimed was the same value. 0 0.30. 0 0.30. Now you might... You might think that because you have the same value here as you have here, that these are going to be the same. You might think that. Right? They're not. So, he plays on an 81 centimeter uh, ADS sensitivity. Cool. I mean, besides his hip fire, we play on relatively the same... Not relatively... I play on 51 centimeter hip fire and 84 centimeter ADS. He plays on what, what was it 37 or 33 hip and 81. So our our ADS sensitivities are are very similar. Uh, but as you can see, just having this number, your aimed mouse sensitivity, having this value and having this value and having this value, all three of these can be the same, but they're not going to give you the same measurement. Uh, so yeah, be be mindful of that. Uh, let me go back to this. I, I'm morbidly curious what he's going to say about this shit. But I run 1200 DPI. If you're running 5000 DPI, those settings will behave completely different for you. So if you really want to get a feel for how I set my settings, make sure your DPI is at 1200 and then try those settings. But you do you. Members of the community have done testing that suggested that using 800 DPI in the mouse is the best to reduce input latency. And then after you set that, you should go work. Look, the, the difference between like running 400, and it, it depends on the mouse too and the sensor. The difference between running 400 DPI and the input uh, latency on that and 800, I, trust me, you, these planet side players, it's going to be imperceptible. It's going to be absolutely imperceptible to you. So all this, all this jerking off about you should use eight hundred, you should use. Stop, please stop. You're, it's just masturbation, man. Just stop. Work on your in-game sensitivity settings. For me, I haven't seen a significant input latency difference between eight hundred or twelve hundred DPI. I see massive input latency differences when I start messing with the actual graphical settings. One other really advanced trick you can do is some mice have the ability to toggle their DPI on the fly. So you could set a button to toggle to a higher DPI, and then if you got hit with a concussion grenade, for example, you could jack up your sensitivity to try to fight through that slow effect. I used to do that way more, but... I don't think I've been doing that in years, honestly. I just move my arm faster. It's... It's, I really don't care. While I have a second button enabled, I don't actually have a button assigned to the DPI shift, so I don't use this feature. So, you know how to take acceleration off your mouse. You understand how it's important to... But, you're using a G600, which is a laser mouse, which inherently has acceleration in it. 
I, I mentioned this before because somebody people want me to do a mouse video because I I have all these fucking mice and shit. And you know how many of them are laser, by the way? I think I have like 30 mice, right? Right here, right fucking here in this drawer. Right here in this drawer. Do you know how many of them are laser mice? I'll give you three guesses how many of them are laser mice. Now, why do you think that is? Balance your mouse DPI with the in-game sensitivity settings. You can't just go grab someone else's user option files and expect it to perform like it does for that person. Now, I want to get into sensitivity interacting with your gameplay, but there's one other technical part of sensitivity I want to talk through. You might start hearing terms like 8 centimeter 360. What this is, is a way to make mouse sensitivity universal across games. It measures the distance it takes to move your mouse to complete one full revolution in game. So in a world where there's all these different sensitivity settings, DPI settings, you could calculate what your distance to turn one circle in game is, and then be able to speak universally on the topic to any person or in any game. I'm gonna leave a link down in the description to a mouse sensitivity converter calculator. So if you wanna figure out what you like playing at and then convert it between games, you can. Okay. Now we can really bring sensitivity into game. The general rule of thumb is to bring your sensitivity down. Your average mouse pad is not big enough for gaming. If you are playing on a pad, you should be looking for a gaming mouse pad, which is oversized compared to an average one. Personally, I play directly on my desk. compared to an average one. Personally, I play directly on my desk. What the fuck? I like having all the space and not falling off a pad. Sometimes it's still not enough room. But this is how you maximize your ability to track targets. If your sensitivity is too high, you're going to be battling over aiming. That is, you try to snap to a target, but you aim past them. And then you have to recorrect back. And then sometimes you even have to recorrect a third or a fourth time. Having high sensitivity does not allow precision when tracking targets or flicking to targets. When you hear... Depends, depends what measurements you're talking about. I think it's... When you get down into it in terms of like... There are there are really good players who are consistent with faster sensitivities. So in in general having and before remember I'm not talking about like crazy shit like 3 centimeter, 5 centimeter. I'm not talking about stuff. I'm talking about like 20 30 down the the fat that's faster. Uh not this uh, outlandish retarded shit that that people play on. Yeah, you're going to have you're probably 99% of you are going to have a hard time tracking people on a 5 centimeter 360. It's it's just the nature of it. Uh, however, with that said, there are people that are very good and consistent on high sense. It, it happens. It can happen. But the chances of the, your general average run-of-the-mill shitter being very good and consistent on high sense is i think a, a tad less uh it's not it's probably not going to be the case and a, a, a lot of it you can go look you can just see it uh, go most people that stream on twitch that are new to the game their sensitivity is they have no fucking clue what they're doing in that stuff and they're all over the fucking place and one of the things that people are afraid of when they go to low sensitivity is they're they're afraid that well I'm gonna I'm gonna see if he goes into talking about low sensitivity because I'm a low sense player and I I have always been a low sense player so maybe I'll see what he says about that and then uh, I'll give you my my thoughts on that here tracking it refers to your ability to keep damage on a moving target 
when you hear about flicking to target, it's target acquisition and putting damage downrange on them. This is most often associated with sniping, where you go from target recognition to headshot kill extremely rapidly. But the bottom line is the flick is the acquisition, getting reticle on target. The tracking is keeping the reticle on target as it moves. Let's take a look at this fight. I step out, I see an initial threat, engage it. It disappears and then I notice the light assault on the roof. Now the sensitivity topic goes very hand in hand with actual mm. aiming. It'd be worth breaking this down again there, but for now we're just gonna speak about sensitivity. So this is my moment of recognition. Now let's see the flick, the acquisition and the engagement. Not terrible. I feel like the flick was a little bit slow, but this is where defining a good sensitivity and then building muscle memory on top of that will really change engagements for you. Let's take a look at it going a little bit slower. This is really not a very large movement, probably only about 10 degrees on the screen. So imagine if you had, for example, a two centimeter 360. It's a very high sensitivity. You would basically have to make this adjustment with one millimeter of mouse travel. That's just not a realistic ask of your muscle coordination. Having a few more millimeters to work is gonna make a big difference. Now you can see a little bit of over aiming here, but at least it was only once and not three or four times. This is where having that good sensitivity foundation that stays the same is really important as we move into aim training later on. So soldiers, if I've sold you on the merits of reducing your sensitivity, Please know this is not a silver bullet that you just do it and all of a sudden you're better. It's actually a situation where you do it and at first you're worse because your muscle memory is now totally out of whack. Yeah, this that's one of the big things. When you tell people to to lower their sense and then they they start playing, it's it's something that's initially uh it's very uncomfortable because they they're so used to playing on a faster sensitivity and being able to react and respond to threats that they perceive in the game. Like they feel like they can do that really fast uh, because they don't have, they don't have the, the knowledge and the experience of playing on a low sense to know how to react to those kind of things. Uh, but at the end of the day, if if someone like me is playing and there's a there's a threat back here to my side, I just I just have a fast movement with my arm. I, I have a big ass mouse pad. I have a big desk. I have a lot of space, and a lot of my stuff, a lot of my stuff in, with big movements like that is just a, a fast twitch of my entire arm, and I'm I'm getting over there. Uh, that that seems very, that seems very unintuitive. I think to people when they first go to low sensitivity because they don't understand the the snap and the fast twitch that you ha you're doing with all these muscle all your entire arm your entire all your muscle groups and everything here everything's firing and you're snapping over they're used to to doing everything from from right here and don't get me wrong i play low sense but a lot of my micro adjustments and stuff in ads which is like 84 centimeter a lot of that is still happening here but in general, overall, I'm still using my entire arm to do everything. It's just that the the big, the big movements, the sweeping movements, are done with an entirely different set of of muscle groups. Uh, it's it's intimidating, and Sirius is right here that you're probably going to be bad. And this is this is something that people run into is they switch, they lower their sensitivity, and they have a hard time with it. And they don't, this is the problem with fucking casuals, man, is if they are not instantly given success, if they're not instantly fucking gratified by whatever they're doing, they quit. They get away. You saw it at the beginning of this video with those comments about it. I'm dying a lot. I'm going to quit. This isn't Call of Duty where I, I don't even have to aim and I play on controller and I press my left trigger and the game auto aims for me. This is way too hard. Like... I'm not going to start the casual rant on this video because there's a I've I've done that enough lately, but it it pisses me off that there's this entire group of people that that just and me, when they don't have success immediately they just quit. Uh, it's it's really bad. But yeah, when you go to low sensitivity for the first time or you are playing a lower sensitivity than you're used to, 
uh, you're gonna you're gonna struggle. You're you're not gonna be you're not gonna be as as good as you were. Uh, and not saying that you were you were good to begin with, because most of the people that are playing on these super high sensitivities are fairly mediocre. Uh, just know that you're gonna struggle at first, but your your floor. Your floor for like movement and stuff with your arm and your hand and stuff, the floor for that is is going to rise up because you're going to have to do more. But your ceiling on what you're able to do more consistently in the game uh, is de is probably almost definitely going to improve. It's going to be easier for you. Because switching to low sense, switching to low sense right off the bat and using a lower sensitivity, I think is is the easier way to go about it. Uh, definitely. Uh, I think low sense is just easier to use, honestly. Uh, there, there's some people that I know that play on higher sensitivities that are extremely good, and I think in general they're, I think they're just they're better uh, at what they're doing. They have better and finer muscle control over what they're doing, and they don't need that. They don't necessarily need that room uh, to make bigger movements to be more accurate. So. Let's get back to the video. I don't think there's one right way to do it. I personally like gently adjusting. Yeah, there's no there's no one right way to do it, but there's definitely wrong ways to do it. And to, to play on retarded high sensitivities and say I'm comfortable is definitely still the wrong way to do it. Uh, if That's if you care about getting better. Which, if you're watching a video about principles of gunplay sensitivity there's maybe there's a chance that you're trying to get better to new sensitivities if i feel like my tracking's just not there i'm seeing a lot of extra over aiming i'm going to drop my sensitivity a little bit and steadily recreate muscle memory at that new lower sensitivity setting and there's there's a, th a thing too where a lot of this stuff is super dependent on what you're using. Like if you're using a, a heavier mouse on a on a a mouse pad that has more friction, it's it, there's going to be more effort. You have more stopping power on, on your movements, but in general, there's going to be more effort to get started in moving. Uh, whereas on the other hand, if you're playing on a on a mouse pad that's considered fast and you're using a lighter mouse. There's a lot of different shit. There's a lot of different gradients here where one sensitive, like my sensitivity I play feels completely different. Like I could be playing on, on a ZA-13 on a GSR and then I'm on a super light on the, the Hien mid and my sensitivity is the same, but it feels two different ways. Uh, peripherals and what you're using can often play a big uh a big role in that too so or i mean you can just be a guy who plays a, a laser mouse on a on a fucking desk and not have a mouse pad and i'm uh... other people are going to be like why waste the time just find a pro with a good sensitivity setting put it there and then immediately start building that muscle memory even though it's going to be so hard at first I don't think there's a right way to do it. Just as long as you start working at it, even though it feels intimidating and feels bad. I see people that have effectively given up shooting at targets that aren't standing still, and they could never even dream of shooting a target out of the air. But I assure you, if you start with the fundamentals, that is having a good canvas, a good desk or mouse pad to work on where you can move your mouse over a very large area and decrease your sensitivity so your hand-eye coordination actually has room with your mouse to make the adjustments you need to. Once we get to that aim video, you'll be picking those light assaults out of the air, no problem. Okay, soldiers, that is gonna be it for me on sensitivity. The next video is gonna be on settings, which is- One thing he's leaving out here is, is like, I know for me playing on a, playing on a low sensitivity, like I, I generally, play in a very specific uh manner because sometimes sometimes you have to depending on what you're playing you have to kind of you 
adapt your play style to to how you're shooting. Uh, it's it's hard to explain, but I I would have have to do like a, a video of what I mean. It's like playing around what you play as. Uh, yeah, maybe maybe I'll do that. I don't know, but I guess this is the end of the video. Uh, I mean, surely somebody's got to figure out that the guy doing a video on sensitivity doesn't play on a mouse pad and he's playing on an MMO laser mouse. So just complimentary to this one. We've already talked about your visibility and some people might, might, I keep bringing that up, but some people, some people might think that's like petty or, or cheap or something, but it's, it's kind of a really, it's kind of a really big deal that someone who's trying to teach you about sensitivity can, can say, eh, for the most part, getting it like kind of right, but then at the same time, be doing things that are extremely uh, detrimental to consistency and and aiming. It's just, I, I wouldn't expect anything else. I, I really wouldn't. Once we have your sensitivity and settings all set, that's when we can really dive into how do you train yourself to be good at aiming. I'm gonna give you one more look at my sensitivity settings. If you wanna start there, please remember I use 1200 DPI on my mouse. There will also be a link to my user option files down in the description if you wanna look from those. Oh, another huge thing here. Another, this is, this is massive too. This completely changes the way you play the game. This man plays on Zoom toggle. We're not gonna mention that at all? Cause that's, that's a pretty big fucking deal. I didn't notice that till now, but that makes a big difference on how how you're aiming and shooting at people. Some people might think that's they don't know what I'm talking about. And they think that's not the case. Well, it kind of makes a big it kind of makes a big difference. Those I keep one as standard definition, potato mode really, and one is high def. But that is all for now, fellow Raxians. I am Commander Sirius, and until next time. I will see you, planet side. So I guess I guess there's there's some there's some good things in here, but there's a lot of just bizarre, weird stuff that you'd expect from someone who. Eh, I don't know, man. Uh, once again, uh, there's never any shortage of. I I had to do a video on this because I just I just saw the thumbnail right away and I, it just it just does something to me. Uh, yeah. Anyway, uh, this will be this will be pretty edited down. There it won't be super long, but I just thought it, it was it would be fun to comment. And I think I'm gonna plan to comment on some more stuff that he does in this series. So uh, we'll see you later in those videos.